Hi there! This is architect David Barcelona. Welcome to Arkida, where you will learn anything and everything about construction. For this episode, we will be discussing about how to do wall framing using steel. Now, these are the several commonly used profiles for steel framing. We have a furring channel, metal studs, metal trap, main channel, and wall angle channel. The furring channel is used if you plan to install heavy finish. Let's say you plan to install marble slabs, granite slabs. You anchor them straight to a furring channel. Now for the metal trap, try to notice that on the picture on the left side, the metal trap is positioned on the top and bottom of the frame, while the metal studs will be both the horizontal and vertical framing. If you ask what the main channel is that is used for ceilings, and the wall angle is also used for ceilings, which will be discussed on other videos. Now these are the several sizes available or commonly used sizes for metal studding. If you'll notice on the metal studs, the web is the depth of your studding. Meaning to say it is 51 millimeters deep, 64, 76, and so on and so forth. While the commercially available length is 2.4 or 3 meters, although you can order a size longer than 3 meters. Available thicknesses is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and so on. That goes the same way for the metal trap. If you'll notice the picture on the right, the lower right of this picture, you can see utility hole for wire connections. This is usually used for vertical studdings because that is where you will have your conduit pass through. Now this is how the metal framing is being positioned. If you'll notice the word trap is located at the lower portion of the wall. Then stud is the vertical studding. You will also no notice an angle which is for the corners. Now these are construction drawings for metal framing. If you put your attention on the leftmost picture, you will see that it is for a door opening. You will also notice that it is written as double steel stud, meaning to say for that portion of the door it has to be double studding. Why? To ensure stability because that is where you will install your wooden jam or plastic jam later on for the door. Now the picture on the upper right which is titled as lateral bracing is actually the horizontal studding. Sometimes they call it lateral bracing. While the picture on the lower right is a floor plan or a plan of the wall. If you will notice, it is a corner detail wherein it is double studded also. Why? Because that is to provide rigidity or stability of the wall itself. Now, there may be a question that, Sir, is it possible to do a single stud? Yes, but that is used only for low use or low use uh, spaces like bedrooms. But if you are using it for offices, then I would advise that you use a double studding for corners. Now these are certain examples or pictures of how a studding looks like. The picture on the left, the upper left, you will see that it has vertical studdings with the holes in it. Make sure, or when you do inspection of the project, make sure that all these holes are aligned. 
because there are some contractors who will just install it without ever checking the alignment of these holes. On the right side, lower right picture again is a 3D of a door frame. As you can see, for the door header, it has also another vertical stud to support it in the middle. Now, how do you anchor your top and bottom tracks? This is just for the tracks, not for the studding. If the flooring or the slab above is concrete, you use a concrete nail or you may use the expansion shield or screw, which is commonly known as tox. So again, that will be determinant upon you on the time frame, meaning to say, because if you use expansion shield, you have to drill, you have to start screwing it, unlike using a concrete nail. You will just have to do your final decision on what type of anchoring if it is concrete. Now, if it is wood, you just use a common wire nail or CW nail. If it is going to be steel, you will use a self-tapping screw. The reason why it's called self-tapping, because if you look at the picture, the thread runs up to the head of the screw. For stud to stud anchoring, you use a rivet. It's either called a blind rivet or pop rivet. You use a riveter gun or riveter to install these rivets. You can also use a drywall screw or black screw to install your stud to stud. So how does a rivet work? Rivets are strong, lightweight fasteners. Here's how a pop rivet works. A rivet has a shank and a mandrel. The rivet is inserted in a hole drilled through two materials. A rivet gun pulls on the top of the mandrel, expanding the shank. As the shank expands, pulling on the mandrel clamps the two materials tightly together. The force from the gun then snaps off the mandrel head at a pre-made breakpoint. It's called a pop rivet because of the sound the head makes when it snaps off. Now this is just one of the samples of standard details using wall framing, including the finishes. If you check the internet, there are a lot of details showing how to install your wall framing that would be dependent on a case-to-case -case basis or how you want to install it. Now, if you ask me how to install the finishes, that will be discussed in a separate video. I've included in the description down below a YouTube of how to install wall framing. Click the subscribe button to discover all the other videos in this site, click the notification bell to be notified about new videos that we post. Press the like button to share this video to your friends. If you have additional comments, please post them down below or at our Arkida Facebook page and I will answer all your queries. Thank you.